All righty, traders, this is Blake Morrow, and you are listening to the Daily Roundup webinar. Uh, hold on one second. Um, all right, sorry about that, guys. I was just um, I was in the middle of a couple calls. Um, the first two days of this week has been relatively busy, uh, not just from trade. Well, the, the market's been busy today, but uh, just, you know, this is post uh, post. Um, Trader Summit from last week, and uh, you know, obviously, there's a lot of talking and chatting going along, uh, going around because of that. So let's talk a little bit about the euro and uh, about first of all how heavy it's trading. And I, you know, I was with a couple of the traders in the chat room today, uh, shorting the euro when it when it, on its move back up towards 110. I think I shorted at 108.82. I closed it when it dropped back down. Um, below set uh, below 60 to 59 I f you know at the time I, I figured just taking a few pips out of it was fine um, but uh, could have obviously made more but hindsight trading is always 2020 at the time it did you know look like a perfectly good 13 14 15 pips however many I took out of it at the time but if you remember from the face webinar as I told you I wasn't going to trade counter trend you know on the long side but I was going to short it into strength and uh, fortunately I um, I managed to uh, sell some uh, a little higher and then covered up um, and uh, obviously a little too early and that and thanks to Benedict in the chat room because of that but you notice what we're doing is we're, we're sitting around the 618 retracement I am still interested in shorting the euro again I, I don't mind especially if we get a move above uh, 109 and then it squeezes a little higher I, I would be more apt to sell like a move up to 109.50 or something. Now, why could that happen? How could that happen? Well, the one of the reasons why that could happen is because the S&P continues to grind higher. You know, so we have the S&P continuing to grind up. We are at the 618 retracement. So um, now that doesn't mean that we're going to stop here either. We could continue higher. And if that happens, then the dollar is going to weaken. Then we're going to see some, you know, Euro dollar bouncing, if you will. But uh, I still believe that the S&P, as long as we're below, uh, th th this is last week's 618 retracement. As long as we still stay below that, I'm not worried about being on the short side. We have had a lot of discussions in the chat room why the market is, uh, why the market's grinding higher. I think a lot of it was um, people sold into yesterday's weakness uh, because of a lot of the Warren Buffett comments over the weekend. Um, so yeah, you're getting, you know, you're getting uh, people squeezed out today a little bit. I remember uh, participation is pretty low from the in institutional community. So, um, you know, they're constantly like, chasing each other's tail. They have to chase the market higher. So you're getting a little bit of buying right now. I, um, however you decide to feel about, you know, what's happening right now, it's up to you. But what I will tell you is what hasn't happened is you have not seen the Aussie yen really move up with risk. So the, um, you know, I'm playing the Aussie yen on the short side and all I need is a little hiccup from the equity markets and I'm going to be adding the Aussie yen on the short. Uh, because, you know, we have a pennant formation forming here. We can't even take out the 50% retracement. It's showing some relative weakness at this moment. Also, something that, uh, that, that um, you know, those of us in the chat room are paying attention to, and some of us are trading on the long side. I have a little dollar Mexican peso long. You can see I have an alarm set up just above 24 because I feel that if we bounce off of this trend line and we get back above 24, it's going to squeeze back towards 2450. So uh, I have some exposure. I wouldn't mind adding, you know, on a move back above 24. Obviously, I'd like to see uh, equities come off a little bit and um, in order to uh, in order to to, to, to to build on that position, I'm keeping it relatively light, because like I said, stocks are strong at the moment. I'm not sure they're going to continue, but that's kind of what I'm seeing right now. I haven't dealt with the cable today, thank God, because it's not doing anything. As you guys know, probably from earlier this morning, watching support, resistance at 126, support here at like 124 and change. A lot of um, uh, bank uh, uh, analysis is, is, is tilting towards the short side of the cable. I think it was City or Bank of America. I forget who. Uh, I have to go look at, you know, the two dozen reports that are sitting in my inbox right now that I need to review. Um, that that's really short. That uh, they're short targeting 121 in the cable. I'm just not dealing with it at the moment. And uh, the dollar yen, 
uh, let's not forget that the dollar yen is pretty weak and we've got this bearish wedge developing. As long as we're below 107, the risk is for lower. And, um, you know, we're looking, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit more upset if we start challenging and breaking this 50% retracement, taking on the uh, 618 ahead of the non-farm payroll, but it is trading heavy and that we cannot ignore, especially if you're trading yen pairs like the Aussie yen or the uh, Euro yen, which is weak. Um, I mean, look at the Euro yen. It's been, it's been very, very choppy, but here we are right at trend lows again after squeezing the hell out of the market um, for the last couple of days. We were right back at trend lows. It looks like we're going to break down. And, you know, frankly, the Euro yen looks like it's going to 112 uh, right here. Let me just show you really quick. Like 112.70, 127% extension. I'm sorry, it's 113.90. So that, that looks like where we're going. Um, in fairly short order. And think about if this RSI starts to break down here, that RSI starts to break down, then it's not divergent anymore. Then it's just confirming the move. So right now it's divergent, but uh, I have a feeling that we're going to be breaking the relative strength uh, trend line. That should take, you know, Euro yen back down towards these levels. Again, it's weak. Euro's, a, Euro's acting poorly anyway as it is. So, um, that makes a lot of sense. All right, guys and gals, remember, if you're not listening to this live or if you're not in the chat rooms with us, um, that means you're probably not a member of Forex Analytics. So to try it, it's only $1 for 10 days. Give it a whirl. I'll see you guys uh, back in the chat rooms or tomorrow morning on the Face webinar. Have a great one. Thanks for uh, tuning in. And um, thanks, Brock. Catch you. Catch you in a bit. All right.